Test, test. All right, good, you can hear me. So listen, what we want to do is we want to locate the relative extremes of this function. Uh, y equals 1 over the cube root of 1 minus x squared. Let's uh, write that squared a little better. And in case you're following along at home, this happens to be number 45 from a recent assignment that we were working on. Before we jump into the calculus, uh, I do want to mention something about this rational function. We should investigate and make sure the domain, um, make sure there are no domain issues for this function. And as it turns out, there are a couple of issues. This denominator will equal 0 at x equals 1 and at x equals negative 1. And when the denominator equals 0, 1 over 0, that's an asymptote, a vertical asymptote. So we're going to throw out plus or minus 1 because those are vertical asymptotes. That's important because it affects how we're going to analyze this function. So we'll keep an eye on those. The main thing we have to do is we have to take the derivative so we can locate our critical points. And this function is not really currently written in a form uh, that's conducive to finding derivatives. We're pretty good with our general power rule for derivatives, and um, it's not written in that form. So we can rewrite this thing just by changing the, you know, manipulating the algebra. And when you rewrite it, you end up with 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 third. This is the equivalent expression to the radical form up above. The negative takes care of the 1 over part, and the 1 third takes care of the cube root. Once you write it in that form, the derivative is a little bit easier to compute. We'll have to follow our chain rule. But we end up with y prime um, equals, and then I'll follow my general power rule, negative 1 third times 1 minus x squared. Uh, we're going to subtract 1, so what is that, negative 4 thirds? And then following the chain rule, I have to multiply by negative 2x because that's the derivative of the u stuff in parentheses. Now, this derivative was easy to compute, relatively speaking, but it's not very friendly to work with, so we're going to put it back into some sort of rational form here. So we've got a negative 1 third times a negative 2x. That's 2, 2x over 3. So I'm going to write, oops, 2x over 3. And then I'm going to convert this negative 4 thirds power back into a positive exponent, and I'll write it in radical form. So that converts to, in the denominator, the cube root of, that's the 1 third part, 1 minus x squared to the fourth power. It's in the denominator because of that negative 4 thirds exponent. So the reason I've written it this way is we're trying to find places where the derivative is 0 or undefined. And it, when it's in rational form like this, it's a little easier to do that. What we do is we check the numerator. So we set 2x equal to 0, and we get one critical point, which is 0. And you do the same thing in the denominator. Essentially, we want to set 3 cube root of 1 minus x squared to the fourth equal to 0. And that's only going to happen at two places, 1 and negative 1. But we've already thrown those two points out because those are vertical asymptotes. So when the dust settles, the only critical point that we have to be concerned with is x equals 0. We're going to keep an eye on the fact that those vertical asymptotes exist, though, when we make our sine diagram. So that's how we find, uh, right now, we, we are using a sine diagram to uh, find our relative extremes. So we're going to do a sine diagram on the first derivative. I do want you to realize that there are asymptotes at 1 and negative 1. Now there are no other critical points, so we don't have to worry about anything past 1 or negative 1, but those points are there, and something interesting might be happening there. It's possible there could be a change uh, in the... Let me write this a little bit differently to... to reinforce what I'm talking about. Even though those aren't critical points, we need to find out what's happening on the other side of them because there's a change there. And so as we draw this sine diagram, I'm just going to make it a little smaller. Nope, I can't do that. Man, um, 
I really should just start the video over, but I already had to start it over once because the sound didn't take. I did the whole video. The sound didn't take, so uh, <laughs> you're just going to listen to me babble while I rewrite the sign diagram. So let's do this. When I talked about this in class, I wasn't very clear about how to handle these. We sort of ignored the asymptotes, and we shouldn't do that. Okay, so the, the asymptotes are there. They're not critical points, but they're there. So we need to just remember something's happening there. Uh, and then the critical point's there, and then there's another asymptote there, and then this thing goes on forever. So we'll do a sign diagram based on these values. We need to plug in, let's pick a negative 2 here, negative 1 half here, 1 half here, and 2 here. Now, I'm only doing, uh, I'm only investigating what's happening at the asymptotes so we can see how our function behaves near them. I am not implying that these are extreme values. Negative 1 and 1 will not be extreme values. But they're asymptotes, so I want to see what's happening with the function. This 0 is the only candidate for, extreme, uh, for an extreme value. So we'll figure that part out first. Essentially what we need to do with our sign diagram is plug our representative point here, negative 1 half, into the derivative, and we just need to know if it's positive or negative. So when I plug that up here into the derivative, I'll have 2 times negative 1 half in the numerator. That is negative 1. So in the numerator, I have a negative value. And then no matter what I plug into the denominator, I'm going to raise it to the fourth power and take the cube root. That's all positive, right? Anytime you raise it to the fourth power, you get a positive number. And the cube root of a positive is positive. And when you multiply by 3, it's positive. So when I plug in negative 1 half, my signs are negative divided by positive, which is negative. So what I am claiming is that this function is decreasing on that interval between the asymptote and 0. You play the same game with positive 1 half, and you get a positive 1 on the numerator, and you still get a positive in the denominator because everything you plug into the denominator is positive because you're raising it to fourth power. So that means that on this interval here from 0 to 1, we're positive. When your sign diagram shows uh, a decreasing segment to an increasing interval, you have a minimum. So we have a local minimum here. And that's what we were asked to find. So we did that. We have a local minimum at 0, 1. How do I know that it's 0, 1? Well, I just plug 0 over here into the original function, and I get 1 over 1. So my minimum is at 0, 1. But I also, I'm, I'm just curious about what's happening with this, um, these asymptotes. So I'm going to just test out negative 2 and 2 as well. The same thing happens when I plug negative 2 in is when I plug negative 1 half in. I get a negative over a positive. This time it's negative 4 over some positive number. But this thing is still decreasing, all right, on the other side of the asymptote. And then... When I plug 2 in, I get the same thing that happens when I have positive 1 half. I get a positive 4 over a positive number, so that's positive. So this is increasing. So just to be clear, when we started this problem, our goal was to find any relative extreme values, and we've done that. We found a local minimum at 0, 1. The minimum value is 1, and it occurs at 0. But I've also investigated what's happening on the outside of these asymptotes. I'm doing that because we're trying to eventually figure out uh, what's happening with this graph. Now I'm going to cheat right now and I'm going to go ahead and show you what the graph looks like in Desmos just so you can see that we did find the right point. But keep in mind the sign diagram is supposed to sort of lay that out for us. So we've got our minimum. Let's take a look at the graph and we'll wrap this video up. So here you can see I've typed the original function in on Desmos. I used the one-third power instead of the cube root, but it's the same uh, function. And as we mentioned, we do have asymptotes here at negative 1, right? I actually could have had Desmos draw those in, uh, but I didn't do that. So here's our, here's our asymptotes. And then we said that there was a minimum value, a relative minimum at 0, 1, and sure enough it's there, right? And then remember what our sign diagram showed. It said that from the asymptote towards 0, we were decreasing, which we are. And from 0 to the asymptote uh, at x equals 1, we're increasing, which we are. So everything pans out there. The other part that I had you also do was to check and see what was happening with the function on the other side of 
negative 1. And we said that for negative 2, it was decreasing. And sure enough, it is. Look, this thing just is decreasing, right, as we get closer to the asymptote. And then on the other side, with positive 2, we said it was increasing. And sure enough, this is increasing. It's not increasing very quickly once you get past 4 or so, but it is increasing. So over here, this thing's heading downward, and over here, it's heading upward. So everything that we showed in our work on the last slide is true, and the graph supports that. So these graphs are uh, useful, and I want to recommend when you're first learning and first trying to do these calculations, especially with functions that you're not familiar with, like this rational function with a cube root in it, go ahead and use a graphing tool to help you investigate what's happening. We're supporting the fact that we calculated that there was a minimum at 0, 1. It's a relative minimum. It's only the minimum when we're close to uh, the, the y-axis, but it is a relative minimum. This function has no absolute maxes or mins because it takes off to infinity in the middle here and it takes off to negative infinity down here. Uh, but if you're just zeroed in on this little part of the graph in, in the center towards the y-axis, we have a minimum of 0, 1. Okay, hopefully this helped remind you how to use derivatives, how to locate critical points. The rational functions you just need to be careful with, but it's, uh, it's doable and the process will work. Just be patient with yourself. And then if you do get stuck, pop the stuff in the graph and see if you're heading in the right direction. If you need me for anything, you know where I am. In the meantime, take care.